Hello and welcome to another episode. We are still in Nuevo Leon, Mexico, and if you can see, we are surrounded by white and gray stone, limestone, and gypsum. If you know anything about geology surrounding cacti, you know that's where the good stuff is. And this is the home of some of the smaller, but most significant and most endangered species of cacti here in Mexico. None other than Geohintonia Mexicana and Astechium Hintoniae. We haven't found the Stichium Hintoniae, but if you look closer, I have my friend here, Joe Hintonia. This thing could easily be 70 or 80 years old, and it has a tiny little bloom emerging. It has beautiful pink uh, to purple flowers. There's a lot of individuals on this wall. We just got here and we wanted to make the intro because we found such big and nice specimen here. It's been raining, so the Selaginella gypsophila is doing really, really well and it's a sort of indicator of the rain that's been sweeping this region. The last time we were here, it was in total drought, so all the, all the Selaginella was completely dried off, and now it's all green, signifying there's been lots of rain, and we also see a lot of white gypsum. The white is the same exact brown, uh, sort of powdery stone that covers the entire wall of this ecosystem, but when the rain hits it, it crystallizes and turns white. And that's your, the biggest signal you, you have of arriving to the ecosystem of these wonderful, amazing plants. We found a lot of individuals on this wall and we're going to continue searching for Astichium, but they look very healthy and very happy. And not only are we finding big, chunky guys like this Johintonia here, but we're also seeing lots and lots of seedlings, which is the signal of a healthy ecosystem. It means they're actively producing flowers, seed, and the seed is germinating. So we're going to keep looking. Hopefully we can find some Astichium hintoniae, but these Johintonia are just amazing. They're, they look gorgeous and it has a tiny little bloom coming out here. I hope we can find some in bloom because that would be sort of the icing on the cake for us and for you guys. So we're going to continue our search and hopefully we won't get hit by the rain because I also see some gray clouds that are looking a little ominous. So we're going to keep looking. I hope you enjoy this episode. Let's go. guy seems to have um, fallen in a big chunk of gypsum right off the wall you can see his little tiny root system coming out of the bottom of the gypsum slab so we're gonna look for a little crevice where we can place him back on there I'm sure he's gonna be just fine uh, the root system is mostly undisturbed so and it's a very tiny seedling so he's gonna recuperate hopefully in a very short time so we're just gonna find him a little little cave where there's not too much sun, so right here is perfect. We're gonna place them here. And hopefully nature will do its thing. I'm sure he'll be just fine. Good. Oh man, we have hit the mother load. Look up right above my head. There's gotta be at least 50 Astichium plants here and another 50 Johintonia, and the Astichium are popping off, blooming all over this beautiful, beautiful gypsum wall here. This is the most gorgeous vertical garden I have ever seen in my lifetime. I'm sure it will be the most beautiful most of you have seen. These things are each about six or seven inches wide. If you know how slow a stichium grows in the wild, you know these plants are from the dinosaur age. Just kidding, they weren't here with the dinosaurs. But holy shit, <laughs> they're just so, so gorgeous. I'm like, I, I don't even know what to tell you guys. This is just a sight for sore eyes. If you love cacti, this is better than Disneyland. This is better than 
any other place on earth. Just look at this wall. These things are ancient, they're blooming. I'm gonna look for some fruit and you better believe that if I find some seed, I'm gonna take home at least a little bit of seed. If you're out in habitat, I would never encourage you to take a plant and I wouldn't say you, it's okay to take a bunch of seed, but taking one seed pod is not going to hurt the ecosystem. If you find more, spread them around, but come on, would you be able to contain yourself from taking at least a couple of seed home to try to germinate? I know I won't. If I can find some seed pod here, I'm gonna take it home and I'm gonna try to germinate them because this is a once in a lifetime opportunity. I am beyond grateful to be here and I really hope you guys are enjoying this experience as much as I am. Astichium is in my opinion one of the most interesting genres of cacti and with only three species in the entire genus, it's also one of the most limited in terms of range and quite rare when compared to other genres like Mammillaria, which have dozens and dozens of species. Astichium hintonii is the largest of all three species. And if you haven't seen the first episode of our habitat exploration videos, make sure to check it out as we go visit Astichium reiterii, another incredible species in the genus. Alright, we found them, finally. This is the big boy we were looking for, Astichium hintonii, right next to its neighbor. Well, this is actually a seedling of Astichium hintonii, and I don't know if you can see them, but right below and basically all over this wall are Geohintonia and Astichium hintonii. And they're blooming. The one, thing I, the one thing on my wish list that I really, really, really wanted to see on this trip, right here, these bright pink flowers and they did not disappoint. Not only are they here, but they look even more amazing than I could have ever hoped for. And I really hope you're enjoying them as much as I am because I am just blown away by these plants here. They are all extremely happy. They look humongous, which means who knows how old they are. And this isn't even the best specimen we're gonna show you. Oh no, we found some even nicer ones that we're gonna have to climb some pretty sketchy little cliffs to find but we're gonna do it for you don't worry we're gonna show you even more blooming Astichium hintonii hopefully we can find some Geo hintonia blooming as well because that would be just like <laughs> I don't even know what what that would be because this is the icing on every cake right here this was me explaining all about Astichium hintonii and Geo hintonia mexicana in habitat and how we traveled two and a half hours down to Nuevo Leon to find them in the two or three canyons that they're endemic to in the entire world. But if you look closely, you'll see that the blooms were not quite ready to put on their show. So something inside me said, go back tomorrow, cancel wherever it is you're going because it's going to be worth the fireworks. And... Ta-da! What do you know? Not only are there fireworks, but there's fireworks all over this vertical wall. Oh my God. These things are just incredible. They're about half an inch wide and the most vibrant shade of purple or magenta or whatever you call this color is just amazing. And not only is it this individual here blooming, but there's about 30 or 40 all over this wall that are also putting on their show and welcoming the, the insect pollinators that are in charge of bringing pollen from one flower to the other to create seed and eventually regenerate all this all of this ecosystem these plants only live on these vertical gypsum and limestone walls they're called gypsum endemics for that reason you can only find them in this particular ecosystem and all their canyons that have the same sort of exact conditions of altitude temperature exposure to the sun etc and one thing that i found extremely interesting is that not only do their blooms open only when the sun shines right directly on this canyon, which happens between 9 a.m. and 11.30 a.m. and not a minute after. They're already starting to close. When we arrived, they were a little bit more open. We managed to get here earlier because that's exactly what we imagined was going to happen. So 
we are extremely lucky and fortunate to be here right on the on the exact time when they're doing their thing and i really hope you can appreciate them and hopefully that'll get you on the conservation bandwagon because it's really important for us to do our best to try to keep these things alive and thriving not only in cultivation because they are everywhere in cultivation now you can easily find astichium and johintonia in cultivation but also in the wild it's important that we have this wild biodiversity and that these plants are able to survive in these very limited ranges and ecosystems where they belong Each genus of cactus will generally produce a single color or maybe two colors of blooms depending on the specific species of pollinator insects it wants to attract. And it's quite interesting to see that although Astichium and Geohintonia are technically different genres, since they've evolved in the same ecosystem and trying to attract the same pollinator insects, their blooms have evolved to look almost identical. Although we were not able to find any blooming Geohintonia, I have seen them blooming in cultivation and the flowers are stunning and they look very similar to Astichium hintoniae. It's not very often we'll run into other people while exploring such remote areas while looking for cacti and succulents in the field. But whenever we have, they're usually extremely welcoming and happy to talk to us about their homes and about the plants that they grew up around. And this lady was definitely no exception. She had plenty of stories to tell about people who come from all over to take pictures of her plants. And she was very happy to hear that we were not here to steal her donkeys which she told us was a problem in this area, believe it or not. I don't know who would want to steal from this sweet old lady. But she also told us that cactus poachers have also been here and they've also gone as far as threatening her when she asked them to leave one time that she found them removing plants from the ecosystem. So before you ever buy a plant that looks like it may have been removed from habitat, think about these situations and how you affect not only nature, but the people who live in these areas. As you can see, the market of poached cacti not only affects the plants themselves and the ecosystems in which they belong, but also the residents of the areas where they live. And it's just one more reason not to collect plants that even look like they've been removed from habitat. Look at that, those things are just amazing. And to think that these things are so, so, so restricted to their range, you can only find them in a couple of canyons in this region. And not only did we find them, but we found them in bloom. Um, I had never seen any content or any videos of these guys blooming. So I'm ex extremely ecstatic that we found them. They are in very good conditions. It's been raining here, all the other, all the other plants look very active and very green. So everybody looks to be really happy here. This is a healthy population. I haven't seen any holes of any po uh, poachers coming through here. I'm glad they haven't been able to find them. And I really hope they never find them. So we're gonna do our best to obscure the locations. We are never going to show any names of towns or anything like that because we really want these things to stay on these walls forever. They look like they have been here forever and they should stay here forever. And I really hope you're enjoying these sitting on your couch or wherever you're watching this. This is just amazing and it's so, so worth preserving and conserving 
all of these natural wonders that we find here in Mexico. So I really hope that you fall in love with them and you sort of understand how small their range is and how difficult it is for all the conditions to come together for them to survive and thrive so that we can do our best to try to keep the very thing that we love, which for me is cacti and succulents, thriving and alive in the wild. I really hope you enjoyed this episode. My name is Manuel from East Coast Kamanchaka, and I'll see you on the next one.